Hey everyone, Mary here at the Reiki Place. Today we're continuing our exploration of the tarot cards and we're going to be talking about the court cards. Now, what I'm trying to do in this series is not give you a detailed description of every individual card and not to go into all the finer nuances because once you start reading the cards, you're going to do that with your intuition. And also I encourage you to do, you know, additional reading, read the little books that come with your decks and read extra books that go more in depth into the meanings of the cards. But what I'm trying to do in this series is help you give you a kickstart. So by looking at the energies in a given suit and the energies in a given card, um, whether it's a number or a court card or the ace, then you can start to put together in your own intuitive imaginings, you can start to put together a picture of what that card means. And so let me give you an example. The ones is about fire, the, the um, element of fire, the suit of passion, of um, creativity, of creation. And the court cards, let's say the king, is the um, energy of authority, of leadership, of the yang presence, you know, because he's a king, of assertiveness, of knowing how to get things done, knowing how to um, wield his power. So you put that together, the power of the wands, you know, the wand is like the magic wand, abracadabra, let's let's make this happen let's let's manifest this thing that we're trying to do and so you've got that energy and the energy of a charismatic and authoritative leader that knows how to get things done and knows how to lead others to get things done so are you beginning to feel the picture the energy of the king of wands so that's the way i want you to look at this we're going to talk about the energies in the suits and then the energies in the court cards now the court cards are overloaded they can be the people in your life or they can be your own energies so again going back to the king energy you've got the king of wands is if that's an energy within you we're looking at your power to create your the yang is the creative principle so we're looking at your energy to create your energy to manifest your energy to lead a project to lead a project into being or maybe to lead others in a project into being so it's kind of energy now if we're looking at somebody else in your life you know this might be your male counterpart or it might be a boss at work it might be the energy of your father or it might be a very strong energy of somebody that you're moving away from in your life so every every energy is on a spectrum so the king of wands while we want to think of him as this powerful creative magnificent force he can also be a controlling narcissist so he can have the opposite energies of of all the good energies along that same spectrum of energy do you see so you know as i said he might be a negative figure it might be a very abusive or controlling father figure that you had in your life now how do you know the difference well that's where your intuition comes in and also you've got to talk to the person you're reading if it's yourself it's it's actually very hard to read yourself. If you're trying to read yourself, I recommend doing like a one card draw or a three card draw, looking at past, present, future, yesterday, today, tomorrow, last week, next, this week, next week, you know, that kind of thing. It's very hard to be um, the, let's call it the unbiased observer when you're doing a reading for yourself because you, you're colored by what you want to see or by what you're afraid of seeing. Whereas when a neutral person reads you, they're giving you more of an unbiased reading. So practice giving your readings to friends and then ask your friends to give you readings. That's a great way to learn, to get started. Let's go and look um, at the, I just wanna bring in a comparison between the the kings and queens the court cards and the major arcana so let's take a look at the first card in the major arcana which is the magician 
uh, notice that in the magician energy, which I haven't uh, talked about the major arcana yet in this series, but I will, but maybe you already know something about it. So he combines the power of his mind because he's, you know, he's the archetypal manifester, the magician with his magic wand, and that's the energy of wands. And he merges this with the power of his intuition, which brings in the energy of the king of cups. He has the knowing of how to do it, right? The inspiration. And then he brings that knowledge in with his knowledge of how things work intelligently, intellectually, how he should do that, how to, how to make that happen. And that's the energy of the king of swords. And then he has this uncanny ability to make it manifest. And that's the king of pentacles. So do you see in each one of the kings, you've got an energy of the magician, one of the energies of the magician. And the magician is the perfect integration of all of the kings. And therefore each of the kings is reminiscent of the magician. And now the kings are considered um, the minor arcana and the magician is of course the major arcana. So similarly with the queens, you'll see that each of the queens have a spark of the high priestess, the yin energy, the number two in the major arcana. The high priestess combines the energy of all the queens because she's all knowing, all seeing, all loving and all powerful. And so she listens to her inner guidance and follows that guidance. Let's take a look now at the cards. In the, in the traditional Rider Waite deck, the court cards are the king, the queen, the knight, and the page. Now, you may find um, other takes on that where you see the king, the queen, the prince, and the princess. And I actually like this because it helps us understand the balance of the yin and the yang at both levels, at the king-queen level, and also at the prince-princess level, or the knight-page level. So it helps us see the energies of the younger generation as well as the energies of the older generation. So whether your deck includes a knight and a page or a prince and a princess, remember that these are energies and not necessarily people. They might be your energy, the energy of the person you're reading, or they might be the people or the influences in your life. Um, although they can be people, a princess can also represent a male who is young and sensitive, and a prince or a knight may represent a female who is courageous and ready for action. So don't get too hung up on prince, princess, king, queen, but looking rather at the energies, the yin, the yang, the less mature, the more mature. So if that's not enough to confuse you, then there is the Crowley deck, uh, Alistair Crowley's deck, the Thoth Tarot, where the king is a knight. So I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. So if you want to learn the Thoth Tarot, you know, look that up. There's a lot written about the Thoth Tarot and the nuances between the Thoth and the regular tarot deck. Um, I'm basing this teaching on the Rider Waite deck, although there are many decks out there that have uh, flipped the eight and the 11, like the Alistair Crowley deck, and that are using something, you know, a knight instead of a king or some other representation um, of the king. So as you, as you learn the nuances of the tarot, you can explore all that. But in this video, I'm just going to try and keep things simple. And also, um, this is interesting to me, the way that regular card decks have evolved from the tarot. Uh, I talked about that in my first video on the aces, but in the American deck, which is actually evolved from the French deck, we have the king, the queen, and the jack. So the jack is the combination of the knight and the page. During the Spanish Inquisition, the tarot was forbidden, and so it morphed into a deck of regular playing cards and was reduced from 78 cards to 52 cards um, in the French deck. I, I believe the Spanish deck only has 48 cards. Uh, primarily, they took out the major arcana, uh, which we're gonna cover in another video, and uh, they combined the last two court cards into a single card. So I believe that this is where we get the expression jack of all trades because he serves as both a knight and a page in the regular deck of cards. Now in the Spanish deck, the 10 and the page were combined into the 10, 
the knight was retained and the queen was eliminated. Uh, so I'll let you draw your own conclusions on that. But no matter what deck you're working with, um, I just want you to observe the progression in the maturity levels of the cards, as we were saying, as well as the yin and yang energy. So if you're reading with an American deck or a Spanish deck or any other kind of deck, just looking for that progression in the court cards. And getting now into the meanings um, of the individual cards. So we will start with the page or the princess. This card is about a new beginning, a new project. It could be about a young person. It could be about any person going through a new experience or some kind of spiritual rebirth. It can also be a message. In another aspect, it could be somebody who's not acting their age or being a baby about something, or it can be the start of a new love, especially the page of cups. And of course, these are just examples that it might be another type of beginning uh, or another type of new, new energy coming in. You'll determine that using your intuition. And we're going to look at that a little more deeply, but I'm just going uh, in overview to start with through each of the court cards. So the knight or the prince is someone who's matured and somewhat, but has not reached full maturity. So he could be an adolescent or a young adult. And thinking of the energy of a knight, a knight is bold. They feel invincible. They're enthusiastic. They're zealous. Sometimes a knight can represent an energy that's foolhardy or immature, especially if it's matched with a queen energy or a king energy in a relationship reading. Um, a prince or a knight is keen to help, but sometimes he rushes in like a fool or like a bull in a china shop. And he might be awkward or clumsy. There can be that energy about the knight. But they're always, I think, I see the knights as sincere and full of integrity. They're they're honorable and they're helpful. They want to help. They literally want to be your knight in shining armor. And then we have the energy of the queen. The queen is the yin energy of leadership, confidence, power, knowledge. The queen knows who she is and what she wants. She executes her life and her interactions with kindness and integrity. She's the yin energy of leadership right? The yin energy of leadership. So she is a good leader, but she's not that assertive force. She's that gentle management force, you know. The different energies and the different suits can change, of course, can change that. For example, the queen of wands can be a controlling figure or a narcissist, whereas the queen of swords can be very blunt and very direct. She can be a real bitch sometimes. They both can. The queen of wands and the queen of swords can both be a bitch sometimes, but that doesn't mean they always are. So you have to, again, pull in your intuition and determine the tone of that reading and what they represent in your reading. The king is the yang energy of leadership, confidence, power, and knowledge. He's confident, he's sure of himself. He's full of honor and integrity. He commands those around him kindly, but assertively. He's fearless and he always knows the right thing to do, but he's not foolhardy like the knight. His fearlessness is not born in that energy of, oh, nothing's gonna bring me down. I'm, you know, I'm a survivor, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm invincible. The king doesn't have invincible energy. Uh, he knows that, um, you know, that, if he fell into a trap that he could get himself into hot water, but he's not afraid of it. He's not afraid of going out there and trying it. So again, the different energies in the different suits will change the energy of the king. The king of cups can sometimes be a real softy. He'll romance you by candlelight, but don't expect him to fix, fix things up around the house. He's not a handyman. If you want a handyman, you better marry the king of pentacles. And the King of Pentacles will make sure that there's nothing ever broken in your house, but he probably won't romance you by candlelight. So it just depends what you're looking for, right? So when you're reading the court cards, you might be reading the people in your life, or you might be reading aspects of yourself. 
all of the cards of all of the cards uh, I think the court cards are the most difficult to interpret um, and that's because they're so overloaded with different meanings and you the reader have to figure that out or just listen to your intuitive guidance so it's often important to ask questions of the person that you're reading you know try and get some context around them and some people don't want to talk to you. They, wa they want you to intuitively or psychically know everything about them. So like they give you very few cues about what's going on. But it's important to look up, I think, and look at their face and um, look into their eyes or watch their reactions, watch their body. What is their body language telling you? What is the expression on their face telling you? And when you're not sure, just keep on reading, just keep on going with your intuition and the threads will probably come together at the end of the reading. So, for example, if you look at the page of cups and the first thing that comes into your mind is new love, then that could be what it is. And that's what I would start out with. I always start out with the, the first thing that comes into my mind. So you might ask a question such as, are you looking for new love at the moment? You know, have you been exploring that as a possibility for yourself? Um, but it could also be like that person's son or a nephew or even the boy next door, or it could even be a new baby coming in, or it could be some kind of a message you know that they're about to receive or it could be the start of a new beginning for them or a new path that they're taking in their life a new project or even a trip that they might be going on so it's okay to ask questions you know all around the energy of the particular card you're trying to um to, to interpret so you go with the first thing that comes into your mind but then you ask questions and see if you're on the right track if you're on the right track, it's going to resonate in your body. This is one of the tricks of any kind of psychic reading that you're doing, whether you're reading the cards or whether you're reading people or whether you're a psychic medium. Um, people who are really good at this kind of thing all know this. You listen for the resonance in your body and that comes different, differently for different people, but generally it feels like you're getting the chills or you're getting goosebumps. For me, it feels like butterflies fluttering up and down my spine. It feels like shud shivers or shudders in the spine. And that's a feeling that's very hard to fake. You can try and fake that feeling and see how you get along, but I haven't been successful in faking that feeling. So when I've just said something to somebody, and especially if they're not giving me much feedback, if they're not very responsive, I pause for a little while and maybe even close your eyes and see if you're feeling that resonance in your body because that's your biggest clue that you are on the right track in your reading. Another good thing to do when you're reading court cards is to look for correspondences. For example, if a page comes up and then a knight comes up, this, this could be a progression of growing one's power. Or if the king comes up first and then a knight comes up in the same suit, could there be a loss of traction in a project? Um, or in one's personal evolution, sometimes we have to take a step backwards to see clearly. You know, if you get a king and then a knight and a page, maybe the universe is telling you to pull back, to step back. You might need to start over with something. Uh, a king and a queen of the same suit, that can be a match, a good match, a partnership. It could be a married couple or an ideal partnership. It just depends on the context of the reading. If somebody's asking about love, um, a love uh, reading, then that's going to be different than if they're asking about whether they should change their job. In that case, a king and a queen might represent a great partnership in business, you know. So these are just some ideas that I'm throwing out there, but try and catch the gist of, of what I'm saying and then use your own intuition to guide you to other possibilities. Let's review the energy of the suits. Remember at the beginning, I told you that when you match the energy in the card with the energy in the suit, if you just remember those things, then you don't have to remember the individual meanings in every card because it starts to come together for you. So the wands, we've got the energy of fire, passionate, powerful, assertive, aggressive, the creative force, getting on with things and able to create the reality that you're dreaming of. The wand symbolizes a magic wand, the tool you use to create magic. 
or in other words, manifest, to manifest your own reality. And then the swords is the energy of air, the intellectual, the analytical, truthful, honest, direct and to the point, sometimes words, the energy of words. And just like your words, which by the way, is an anagram of sword, the sword can cut both ways. It is both a tool to cut the ties that bind you and it's also a weapon to hurt those who hurt you. So you have to choose when the sword comes up for you, whether you're using that sword as a weapon or as a tool to assist you. And then the cups, the energy of water, sensitive, kind, intuitive, gentle, loving. Make love, not war. That's the energy in the cups. Cups is romantic and idealistic the suit of the heart. So think about your heart. When your cup is full, you can nourish those around you with what overflows. And when your cup is empty, you're depleted. And then when you try and help those around you, you become resentful and run down. And the pentacles, the energy of earth, all things practical needed to navigate our life on earth come up in this suit. Work, finances, job, family, Happiness, survival, wealth, well-being, physical health, money. They're all represented by the pentacles or the gold coin. Remember, money is the energy exchange of our times. It's the medium of energy exchange that we use in our daily transactions. It's a hard life with no money, uh, but it doesn't solve all our problems. However, money can make life very sweet, so it's important unfortunately, sadly, but that's how it is right now in our lifetime, in this generation. Um, But it doesn't grow on trees, we have to figure out how to earn money. Uh, Same thing with our health, if pentacles is representing health, we have to work at staying healthy, we have to eat right, we have to exercise, we have to look after ourselves. And so pentacles can be about structure, like building a project, a home, a community, building your safe space, building your nest, building your retreat, and also building your world, building out your world, building your relationships, perhaps, building upon things, building upon your experience, creating the environment in which to live out your human existence. So we'll go a tiny bit deeper now, combining the energy of the suit with the energy of the core character. And remember, again, this is only a broad brush and you'll get to know more nuances the more you read and then always remembering to draw from your own intuition to form the final picture. And of course, the person you're reading will be the one reflecting the true energy of any card. And so again, you know, remember to ask them questions as you're reading them and and try and um, try and create a safe space where they're comfortable talking to you the king. Remembering that the king is the charismatic figure, the male or male or yang authority figure, like a leader, a spouse, a boss, an aspect of yourself that is strong, assertive, commanding, those kinds of energies. And then combining it with the suit of wands, the king of wands then has the fire in the belly. He's dynamic, he's passionate, he's a man of action. If he doesn't want to do it himself, he'll get it done. He'll get someone to do it for him, but he will get the job done once he puts his mind to it. And then the King of Swords. The King of Swords is a man of his word. He's a man of honor. He's clever and witty and a good communicator. Justice is huge with this King. Everything with him is about fairness, integrity, honesty. He's fair and square. The King of Cups embodies kindness, love, and compassion. He's romantic in a relationship, but he also wants to save the world. This King is generous, he has high ideals, and he's a humanitarian. The King of Pentacles is a great builder. He's often wealthy, or he might be completely lacking money on the other side of the spectrum. Remember, everything has the other side of the spectrum. He's a practical man, and he'll help around the house. As I said before, he probably doesn't bring you flowers, but he will raise the food that he puts on your table 
and take care of all the repairs around the house, the King of Pentacles is the salt of the earth. Now, if the card comes out reversed or upside down, or even if it comes out right way up, you might be looking at the opposite of that energy. So you can think about that and figure that out for yourself. But just a quick example, the opposite of kind is mean. The opposite of generous is stingy. The opposite of passionate, unmotivated. And the opposite of honest is a liar. So King of Swords upside down might be talking about a man who has lied to you or a man who has not shown integrity towards you, or a man who has used his words against you to bring you down, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, just you, you can put all that together in your own mind. Um, and then you can also think about the extension of those primary energies. So, for example, the ones is about power, but power can be abused. As we've talked about, the ones can be controlling, they can be dominating or they can be bossy. And swords is about honesty, integrity, but they can also be blunt and tactless and sometimes hurtful with their words. And the cups is about love and sensitivity. Cups are usually very intuitive, very sensitive, very gentle people, but they can also be a bit too sensitive. Their feelings can be easily hurt and they may have to retreat to lick their wounds because you may have said something or somebody else may have said something that hurts their feelings. And then the pentacles, they're about work and money and the things we need to survive, the practical stuff of life. But then extending that energy, they could also be hoarders, they could be self-centered, and sometimes they can be oblivious to the needs of others or lacking in compassion and intuition. They can be missing the qualities each king can be missing the qualities, the, the positive qualities that are in the other kings and so on with all the court cards. So let's look now at the queens, the queen, the charismatic yin authority figure or leader, like a spouse, a boss or an aspect of you, but one that is strong, but understanding, sensitive and kind. She tempers her authority through understanding intuitiveness she's intuitively she's the queens are very empathic they're empathing your nature especially the queen of cups who is who is the you know the queen of empathy so looking now at each individual suit the queen of wands knows what she wants she knows what she wants and how to get it she's a go-getter she's a traveler she's a carefree adventurer she's strong and unafraid she's fearless but not in a reckless way, remember, because she's a queen. Um, she may be a temptress as well, looking, extending the energies of the power in the Queen of Wands. She commands the world with her grace and charm, and she knows it. The Queen of Swords is kind and fair and sometimes honest, but sometimes honest to a fault. She can be quite tactless. She's knowledgeable in the ways of the world and she seems to know things without being told. Remember, swords is the suit of air, so you can pull stuff from the air, clear cognizance, pulling stuff from the ether. Um, you can't put over anything, you can't put anything over on this queen. She knows when you are lying. It's very hard to deceive the queen of swords. She's just onto you. The Queen of Cups is the, the Queen of Love. She's all kindness. She's graceful and full of beauty, both inner beauty and outer beauty. But don't let this woman's soft heart fool you into thinking you can take advantage of her. Because remember, the Queen of Cups is the Queen of Intuition. But also because she's the Queen of Hearts, the, the Heart Chakra, she knows her worth. So she knows what you're thinking and she knows her worth. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles, the Earth Mother. This is the one that takes in stray animals and strangers. If you visit the Queen of Pentacles, she'll feed you, she'll clothe you, and she'll give you a big hug. Come on over here, dear, and sit down by the fire and have a big cup of hot, steaming hot chocolate. That's the Queen of Pentacles. She's the Earth Mother. She wants to nurture everybody. There's always food waiting at her house for you. And her children are well cared for. And even if she doesn't have much money, uh, her children are well cared for and very much loved. They won't feel the deprivation. 
And in a crisis, you, you want this woman by your side because she always knows what to do. And she's very resourceful. She will find the resources that you need, the Queen of Pentacles. And like the king, you know, she might not be the most romantic thing, uh, the most romantic of the suits, but she'll never leave you. She'll never leave you high and dry. Now the knights, this is a bold and daring energy that feels invincible. Invincible and adolescent are two words that I associate with knights. Also, um, momentum. Knights are looking for momentum. Maybe they have momentum. Maybe they're finding momentum. They ride their horses. If you look at the knights, most of them are in action. They're riding their horses. They're symbolic of dynamic action. And remember, knights could be male, but they could also be a female energy. So knights, remember, because the knight in the court of old serves the king and the queen, knights may not necessarily be destined to become kings. Um, the same applies to princes. If you have a deck that's using princes, some princes will become kings. You know, the firstborn prince becomes a king, but some princes remain forever princes. So there's something of the energy of the second son in the prince, you know, in the old uh, upper class hierarchy where the, the oldest son inherits, but the second son is he's kept forever. He's a kept man. He never has to work a day in his life, uh, but he always has money. So he tends to be the one that's free to play and sometimes live a frivolous life. Which prince is which? Well, they, you have to figure that out. That's part of the uh, way you have to bring your intuition in. Now the knight is going to serve his king all his life and even lay down his life if he needs to. But a prince doesn't have that same energy. So keep in mind when you're uh, reading different decks, you know, that have a prince or a knight, that you might find those different energies at play. And in fact, that's why people create different decks with different energies in them so that you can change the nuance in, in the cards energy. It's all very interesting and fun to explore. If you're reading from a new deck, get to know it a little bit before you start reading from it so you can figure out what are the energies you're playing with there in your new deck. The Knight of Wands then is full of schemes, mostly in a good way, but not necessarily. He's always up to something. Remember, he's bringing that fire in the belly, the energy of passion, of creativity, of being able to get things done, of being able to make things manifest. So he's dynamic and sometimes he's unstable and he can flare up unexpectedly. Something can flare up around the Knight of Wands, like a fire, like a flame that bursts into fire. He's a traveler, an adventurer, he's a rebel, and he can be a rogue as well. So quite an interesting character there, but he's always full of dynamic action, getting on with things, finding momentum. This is the energy in the king, in the, sorry, in the knights. Now, the knight of swords will bravely fall on his sword to uphold his honor or yours. But unlike the king, he doesn't always have the experience to rise into the fullness of responsibility. So while he's willing to fall on his sword, uh, he, do, he, do, he sometimes might do it foolishly um, and sometimes might hurt himself, you know, in the process. But he's always got his sword. He's always, you know, wielding, carrying his sword out in front of him and he's always willing and sometimes willful. And then the Knight of Cups. Now the Knight of Cups is trying to turn his fantasies in reality into reality. And sometimes he's butting up against life. This guy is a dreamer. He's a romantic. He lives in his imagination. He builds sandcastles in the air, but sometimes he's not capable of building them in real life. And remember the ocean tide, the element of water, will come in and sweep away his sandcastle that he painstakingly constructed on the shifting sands. This night can be a little vague sometimes, a little unreliable. He might be very emotional but he'll still try and move mountains for you because he carries that knight, that knightly energy. He wants to be like all the other knights. He wants to be your knight in shining armor. A hopeless romantic. 
The Knight of Pentacles now takes his work seriously. He's a hard worker, uh, but he can sometimes be a simple fellow. Now, he's not necessarily a dimwit, but of all the cards in the deck, the Knight of Pentacles could indicate that he's a little bit on the slow side. Um, but mostly the energy in the Knight of Pentacles is that he hasn't integrated his spiritual side. He may not be intuitive. And if you take a look in particular at the Rider weight deck, you'll see that all of the Knights, the other three Knights, are all in motion on their horse. There is that energy of dynamic action that we talked about. But the King of Pentacles is sitting motionless on his horse. His horse is awaiting the command to move forward. And the, the, the knight, is he's, he hasn't clicked his heels to spur the horse on. He's stuck a little bit. So to move forward, he needs the guidance of his inner knowing. And that's what he is disconnected from. So sometimes that can be the energy in the Knight of Pentacles. The pages or princesses can symbolize new life, new energy, new beginnings, new love. And just like the page who serves the knight and will one day become a knight himself, pages are sometimes in training. They're in training for the ordeals that lie ahead on the path to mastery, but haven't fully mastered. So think a little bit about the energy of a page who is typically a yang energy, in tr but, but a youth, very youthful energy. Uh, you know, often these are pre-adolescent boys who are training to become knights. And the energy of the princess, if you have a princess in your deck, of training to become a queen. Now, princesses and queens don't always become the rulers of the land, just like the prince doesn't always become the king. The princess doesn't always become a queen, but she's learning to move into the grace of the queen's energy, into the grace of the court energy, to command her presence in that gentle, sensitive in a power that women can sometimes have. So looking now at the different suits and combining that energy, the Page of Wands is a light, joyful energy that dances like a flame, the simplest form of fire. It can be fanned into a strong fire or it can go out if it's not fed by the stuff that it needs, the stuff of life. And this card can mark the beginning of a new adventure or a commitment to meet your goals. Doesn't necessarily mean you'll meet them, but it might be your commitment to try. And then the uh, Page of Swords. This, this guy holds a sword that is bigger than he is. This is like taking Excalibur and giving it to a three-year-old. You know, it's heavy. They haven't learned what to do yet with this sort of truth, with this sort of integrity. But he may um, have novel and new approaches to old problems. He's an, he could be an innovator. He's still growing into the sword. Um, and because of that, he tends to keep one eye over his shoulder. He's still a little bit unsure about who is friend and who is foe. Remember, the King of Swords is about finding integrity. So he may be still exploring what that means. What is integrity? Who has integrity? Who around me has integrity? And then the um, page of cups or the princess of cups, like the small child. Uh, this reminds me of that small child who picks a dandelion and gives it to his mother. The page of cups is innocent in his love. So, so full of innocence and naivete he may be naive so his love may lead him up the garden path at times you know and sometimes he'll find himself at a bit of a dead end uh, but of all the cards in the deck the page of cups um, can symbolize a new love a new love coming in it often uh, does have that meaning or it might also symbolize an apology or a peace offering uh, you can interpret this card to mean a small child or uh, if, it is a, if it is a small child, if your intuition is telling you that this card represents um, a small child, especially one born recently, then it might be a, a crystal child or a psychic child. <laughs> um, I didn't mean that to sound funny. Uh, 
a small child who's been born recently, all small children have been born recently. But what I meant was a child born into the new energies, a child born into the 2000s. Um, these are often crystal children um, and psychic children, and that could be represented by the page or the princess of cups. And then the pentacles, the page of pentacles is fascinated with how life works. Um, interested, curious, like, uh, but also a perpetual student, the undying learner. Um, sometimes this is an energy that's resistant to actually engaging in real life. They're kind of looking through the window, like just figuring out, ah, oh, so this is how it works. So this is how that happens. Uh, but they're not necessarily taking action. Um, but they can also, a page of pentacles can also be a messenger of a new love or a messenger of good fortune coming your way or a new project uh, coming in for you, a windfall, um, something of that nature. So just one last reminder that the court cards are very overloaded and uh, of all the cards in the deck, it pays to really sit and lay these out in front of you, just spread them all out, all the court cards by suit and then again by, you know, their energy page, knight, queen, king, and just study your deck and, and explore the progressions in the energies there. Um, and how those resonate with you, how the pictures as they're depicted in your particular set of tarot cards, how those resonate with you. And so I hope this has been helpful for you. Please do comment. What do you, what, what do you see when you see a page of cups or a knight of wands? Do you interpret them completely differently? What's come up for you? What's worked for you? Leave me a comment. I love to read your comments and hear how you're um, getting on with your tarot card readings. And just one last thing I want to say before uh, we wrap up is that have fun, have fun reading the tarot, you know, enjoy it, enjoy the energies. And so if this has been useful for you, please do leave me a like and share with your friends who are learning tarot. And um, in the meantime, I will talk to you again in the next one.